Peace and blessings. It is my joy and my honor to be here with you, and, and I'm here at the behest and the invitation of the headmaster from Rittenville, Headmaster Saul. Thank you so much for making this happen for all of us. And it is my joy to be with, here with you. When I look out and I look upon you, I can see the spirit, I can see the light, the love, the luminosity, the intelligence, and the beauty that emanates from your very soul. I do not see the condition that you're in or the circumstance. I see who you are as a spiritual being. Beyond religion, I see who you are as a being of light and love and luminosity, a joy that is here and now waiting to escape, waiting to express itself more fully and more completely. So I have traveled from the United States to hang out with you for a few moments. That is me up there. I did cut off my hair. This is the same person. And uh, I cut off my hair about a year ago when I um, came back from Egypt. I had a uh, spiritual rebirth. And uh, it was symbolic to cut my hair off to begin my life again. And we're here to do just that. We're here to be a, in a continued growth and unfoldment and development, activating the potential that's within our very life. So you are here, not only in this facility, but you're here on this planet to constantly evolve and unfold and awaken to the deep and intrinsic beauty of your heart and soul. Now, over 40 years ago, uh, I had a spiritual awakening, one of many, and I know you don't believe it because I only look 30, right? Yes? I don't, that's a joke. <laughs> uh, about 40 years ago, I was attending USC College, and I began to have a series of inner experiences. It culminated with me being in a lucid dream, stabbed in the heart, and I died. And when I woke up, I could see the spirit, the life force, the essence everywhere, illuminating everything. Animate and inanimate objects were shining with the glow of this presence that is never an absence. The beauty was beyond what I could describe, the love beyond anything I had ever experienced. And that began my sojourn, my journey to discover what had happened to me and to discover what, who I was and what was trying to, trying to express through me. And in doing so, I bumped into the spiritual teachings of the masters of the planet and began to understand the nature of reality, began to understand the nature of meditation, began to understand the nature of real prayer, began to understand the nature of who we are as spiritual beings. Now, today, with the time that I have with you, let me just keep looking at the clock here, at the time that I have with you, I'm gonna take you through different stages of growth development and unfoldment and certain practices so that you can begin to Open yourself up to the possibility of being awake to the dynamic beauty and love and harmony and wholeness that is everywhere that is seeking to become more conscious of itself as your life. Now, what I saw 40 years ago, what I saw 30 years ago, what I saw 25 years ago, what I see continually is a presence that is never an absence that you can call it by any name you wish to call it. But this presence wants to know itself as you. It wants to wake up as your very life and being. And what is preventing that is our limited perceptions, our limited focus, our inability to see this reality. Reality is being obscured by thoughts, opinions, lack of self-love and appreciation that the Professor Kim was bringing to us. Uh, a, a sense of self-loathing, all of this is blocking the flow of life from expressing through us. So you are here to, to begin with that hug of yourself to fall deeply in love with what the presence is as your very life. This presence adores you. This presence loves you. This presence knows you beyond anything you've ever done. It knows who you are. And so we are here to wake up to that dynamic. And so when we're unawake, we're in stage one. 
And that stage one is, I'm getting the sign to talk a little slower. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And I thought I was talking slow. But when I'm in America, I just roll really fast. The energy just takes over. But I'm going to slow down a little bit. Is that okay? Okay. All right. So when, when, we, are, um, when we are unawake, when we do not know who we are, as a dynamic spiritual being. When we do not know who we are as an eternal presence, a unique individual expression of the only life that there is, we fall into stage one. Stage one is being a victim. Victim. When we are victims, we think that something outside determines our happiness and our joy. We think other people have the keys to our happiness. We think there's an external circumstance or a condition that's going to determine our destiny. We're victimized by that. We're powerless. And victims ask what is called disempowering questions. They ask victim questions. What's wrong? Who's to blame? Why me? You may have asked yourself some of those questions before. Why is this happening to me? What's wrong and who's to blame? When we're in a victim state of consciousness, we are misusing the laws of the universe. We are misusing the laws of the universe and we're bringing into our life circumstances and situations, people, places and things that vibrate at the level of those disempowering questions. You are here in this forced ashram to begin to ask higher questions, to come out of victim consciousness. Now I'm going to share the four stages and then I'm going to share insights and processes in each stage so that we can begin to be free. So in stage one is victim. Somebody, something is doing something to us. Stage two is the stage that was spoken about in the movie The Secret. The law of attraction. The power of visualization. The power of affirmation. The power of declaration and decree. The power of embracing best case scenarios the power of standing in a feeling of the kind of life you want to live in, beginning to feel it and see it and sense it and say it and declare it and decree it and walking in that vibration, even before you can see it, even before it manifests. The law in that state is you do not describe what you see you see what you describe. So you learn to live in a continual state of describing and declaring the life you wish to live. You begin to describe your life. You begin to see it in your mind's eye. You begin to feel it. You begin to walk in that dynamic even before it physically occurs so that you're living in your future state presently. So you wake up in a state of gratitude, and this is all under the aegis, under the dynamic of spiritual practice. You wake up with a deep sense of gratitude for being alive, for existence, existence. You give thanks for everything in your life. You ask the universe, what is your assignment for today? You're asking a different kind of question. Now, what begins to happen is that what I know is that you are more than flesh and blood. You are vibrational beings. And as you begin to lift your vibration with the possibility of more good 
happening in your life, you begin to attract that to you. You begin to radiate it from the center of your being and circumstances and situations begin to bend themselves according to the higher vibration that you are releasing. In other words, you're no longer looking upon yourself as a victim of circumstance, a victim of people, a victim of society. You're now beginning to take a degree of control over your own vibration internally, inside of your own awareness, and walking in that dynamic. So stage one, you're a victim. Life is hard until you die. External circumstances are causing me to be unhappy. People are causing me, uh, to, people are taking away my joy. Stage two, you begin to realize that you can begin to reshape your internal awareness. Stage one, someone is doing something to me. It's to me. Stage two, by me. I'm beginning to take control over my own awareness. Regardless of what's going on, I can take control of my awareness. There was a gentleman uh, that used to go to Agape. Matter of fact, his cousins went there. And he was arrested for a murder that he did not do in South Central Los Angeles. The police picked him up and Years later, it was discovered that the police officers had set him up to, to take a fall for this crime. So he was in jail for 17 years. The first five years, he knew he was going to get out, but nothing ever happened. Around the fifth year, he found the book on meditation in his, in his, in his room. And he began to study this book. And he began to practice not allowing anything of the past to come into the present. And little by little by little, he became free inside, not free from incarceration of the body, but free inside of his awareness. This went on for the next 12 years, and he became free. He began to uh, open himself up to the possibilities of exploring his potential. He began to be a great artist, a great songwriter, great martial artist. Year 17, the Freedom Project discovered who he was and helped him get out of jail. And when he came out, he came to Agape because we had been praying for him. We had been holding him in prayer. And he came up on the stage and he said, when he was on his way to Agape, he saw a car accident, and he saw the people on the street fighting over a bent piece of metal on the car. He didn't understand it. And then when he came to Agape, he saw people stepping on flowers, accidentally, to get to the meditation room. So he surmised that while he was in jail, he was with people more free than people outside. People outside were anxious, and they thought that they were their cars. They thought that they were the circumstances. But inside, he had become free. He had broken free from being a victim, and then the circumstances shifted, and he found himself outside of prison, but with a much more expanded state of awareness. Stage two, it's, by, it's called by me. I'm changing my own awareness declaration and decree, feeling and sensing the kind of life I want to live, but I'm feeling it as if it's right now going on. Stage three, something is operating through me. Stage two, by me. Stage one, to me. Stage three, the presence is beginning to operate through me. It's I'm in the zone. I'm in an awareness that something is taking over my life. This is the stage of visioning. Stage two, visualization. I can see it, 
Therefore, I can manifest it. Stage three, beyond what I can see, beyond what I can hear, there is something bigger than I am trying to live through me powerfully. And I learn to yield to it. I learn to surrender to it. I learn to let it live its life through me. Stage two, I'm making it happen. Stage three, I'm letting it happen. Stage two, masculine. I'm going to make it happen. Stage three, feminine. I'm yielding. I'm allowing. And so in stage three, this is where we begin to practice what is called visioning. Asking a high question and allowing the universal presence through its law to answer that question and to guide us into a higher order of being. Stage one, we're asking questions like, what's wrong? Stage two, we're beginning to describe the kind of life we want to live in. Stage three, we're asking an empowering question such as, what's trying to emerge in my life? Understand this. There is so much potential in you. There is so much power in you. There is so much intelligence in you. And when you begin to ask, what is trying to come forward? What is trying to emerge? What is trying to happen in my life? And then we listen with the ear that is beyond the physical ear. We begin to see with the eye that is beyond the physical eye We begin to catch the destiny that is within us. Everyone has a powerful destiny. Everyone has a a great gift to share. Everyone has infinite potential that must be expressed. But we have to participate in its unfolding, in its being released. Stage four is called as me. Let's go back to stage one. Something is happening to me. I'm a victim. Stage two. It's happening by me. Stage three, it's happening through me. Stage four, it's happening as me. This presence of intelligence is your life. There's no separation. And when that sense of separation dissolves, the life of the presence begins to shine through you. The intrinsic joy, the joy that's already within you, the peace that's already within you, begins to be revealed. Now, let's go to stage two for a moment. I want you to begin to, in this instant, just close your eyes for a moment. Just close your outer eye. And just listen to the voice of the interpreter. Take a deep breath and release the sound of ah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. And just relax. And begin to get a sense that you're surrounded. by a presence of so much love. Begin to get a sense that you're in a field of safety and well-being. And you can do this by imagining what that would feel like. 
Or you can remember a moment in where you felt that you were surrounded by love. Either one works. You either can imagine it or you can remember it. Have your back straight without being rigid, but in a relaxed state. And imagine and remember that you're surrounded by a feeling of love and the beauty. Now I want you to begin to see the kind of life that you want to live. I want you to begin to see yourself making your contribution, your gift, your talents being expressed. You don't have to ask how this is going to be done. I just want you to see it with your mind's eye. I want you to begin to see the health of your body temple. Just see it in your mind's eye. And when you begin to feel and to see, success in every area of your life. Allow yourself back straight, not rigid, relaxed. Just begin to see it. Imagine it. Now, feel it. Feel what it would feel like to have all of your needs met. Feel what it would feel like and see it to be dynamically healthy. Feel what it would feel like to be extremely happy. There's no rule against feeling it before it happens. See it with your mind's eye. Take a deep breath. Breathe in. Release the sound of ah. Ah. Now be with that for a moment. I'm going to add another component to it. Now, I invite everyone to continue in this state, but to just stand up for a moment. Just stand up. Maintain this awareness. Put your right foot in front of your left. Right foot forward. Left foot back. Put your left hand up. And your right hand back. Look at your left hand. Now take a breath and hold the breath. And as you're holding the breath, feel the peace, the success, and the well being of the life you want to live. Look at your left hand, take the breath, breathe in, sustain the breath, and hold the breath for as long as you can. When you can't hold it anymore, just let go. Just go, ah. You're holding your breath. Okay, everyone release, say, ah. Now, left foot forward, right foot back, right hand up, left hand back. I'm going to explain what's going on to you in just a second. Look at your right hand. Close your eyes and think about the life you want to live. Feel it. Feel the peace. Feel the love. Feel the joy. Feel the prosperity. Feel yourself making a contribution to this world. 
Take a deep breath. Hold the breath. As you're holding that breath, you're feeling the joy and the prosperity and the happiness of the life you want to live. Now release with it, with ah, release with ah, ah. We're going to do it two more times, but let me tell you what you're doing. <clears throat> when you put your hands up like that, you are allowing for the hemispheres of the brain to speak to each other. You're balancing the hemispheres of your brain. When you hold your breath with the feeling of joy, happiness, peace, you are recalibrating your nervous system. Most of the time, when you hold your breath, it's when you're startled or when you are afraid. Somebody scares you, <gasps> and you hold your breath. Somebody says bad news, <gasps> and you hold your breath. And what happens is those thoughts become ingrained in the nervous system. So when you try to affirm or visualize or to practice the law of attraction or make something happen in your life, you're working against the thoughts that are in your nervous system. So what we're doing is we are having the hemispheres of the brain talk while we're feeling the joy and the happiness and the love and we're holding our breath. So at that moment, your nervous system is being encoded with the high thoughts rather than the fear thoughts. Do you understand? Yes? Nod your head. Yes? You understand? Okay, good. So we're going to do it two more times. Remember what we're practicing right now is the law of attraction. Stage two. We are making something happen with our minds so that we'll eventually see it with our eyes. The law is, you do not describe what you see, you see what you describe. So, put your right foot back out, left foot back, left hand up, right hand back. Visualize the life you want to live. See it in your mind's eye. Feel it. Put a smile on your face. Can you do that? Put a smile on your face. It's already happening. Look at your left hand. Take a deep breath. Hold the breath. Look at the left hand. Feel the life you wish to live. Feel the joy. Feel the peace. Feel the love. Feel the prosperity. Anxiety is gone. You're in a field of peace. Hold that breath. The nervous system is being inundated with this higher thought and feeling. Release. Say, ah. Say, ah. Ah. Now put the other foot out. Right foot out. This is our second time doing this. L left foot back. Is it right? No, is it, is, which one? No, this one. Yeah. Left foot up. Right hand up. Right foot back, left hand back. Look at that right hand. It's a beautiful, unique right hand. Feel the kind of life you want to live. Visualize it in your mind's eye. The peace, the poise, the confidence, the self-love and appreciation, the joy, the harmony, the wholeness, 
the prosperity, the love. See your life. the way you want to live it. You're making a contribution. Now take a deep breath, everyone. Breathe in. Hold the breath. You're feeling and seeing the life you want to live. And when you can't go anymore, you just breathe, release with the sound of ah. Ah. Okay, this is our last one for right now. This time, when you, you're going to close your eyes, you're not going to look at the hand. You're just going to close the eyes and see and feel the life that you want to live. Everyone wants to live a beautiful life, yes? Yes? Everyone wants to live a powerful, beautiful life, yes? Everyone ma- wants to make a contribution, yes? Everyone wants to express their gifted nature, yes? You have gifts, yes? You have talents, yes? You want to cultivate them, yes? Very good. Which one is it? Left foot? Right foot. Yes. Right foot forward. Left hand up. Left foot back. This time, close your eyes and feel the life you want to live. See it. Have a mental image of you living the life you're destined to live. You're happy, you're contributing. You're celebrating and activating your gifts. You're sharing. You're with people that lift you up. You lift other people up. You're in good company. You're making a difference. Prosperity is abounding. Put a smile on your face. Your eyes are closed. But look up towards the left hand. Breathe in. Deep breath. Hold the breath, suspend it right there as you're seeing inwardly the life that you're desiring to live. You're feeling it in your bones. You're feeling it in your soul. You're mentally imaging it. You see yourself happy, healthy. When you can't go anymore, you release with the sound of ah. Ah. You feeling it? Last time on this one. Left foot forward, right hand up. Look at your right hand. Close your eyes. Put a smile on your face. Let your, sm- let your face smile. It's a face asana. It's a face posture. Close your eyes. See the life you wish to live. Visualize it. See yourself surrounded by people who love you. People that you love. See yourself healthy. Happy. Happy. Peaceful, loving. See all of that in your mind's eye. Now take a deep breath. Breathe in. Suspend the breath. You're holding the breath while you are seeing and feeling a brand new life.
Him. You can't hold any longer. Then you release. Ah. So in that moment, you have recalibrated your nervous system to an expanded thought, an expanded awareness. Everyone say yes. Say yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I am willing. Breathe. Release. Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I am willing. Breathe. Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I am willing. You may be seated. So that is, that's, that's brief description and exercise around stage two, the secret, the law of attraction. If you can begin to believe it and feel it, you're creating the inner circumstances for it to manifest. Now, how do we know that this is so? A thought is a unit of mental energy. A thought can be measured through biofeedback machines. And a thought transmutes or becomes different forms of energy. So your thought becomes your perception, which generates more thoughts. And those thoughts determine your experience. So in stage two, the power of attraction, you're systematically changing your thinking. It's called spiritual practice. You're doing it every day, taking some time every single day to sit, write down the, the kind of life you want to live, describe it, read what you have written, take a breath. Feel it, sustain the breath, release. You write, so you're, you're bringing your body into it. You read what you write, so you're getting your visual acuity into it. You say it out loud, so you hear yourself say it. Then you breathe and recalibrate your nervous system. So you're literally changing the chemistry of your body temple by changing your thought, which changes your perception, which changes your experience. Are you getting what I'm saying? You follow it? You get it? So if you do this on a regular basis, then your perception will change, and you will no longer be living as a victim. You'll be living empowered. Now, let me share with you, before we move to the next stages, let me share you, with, with you what you have to do to come out of the different stages. When you're in stage one, that's being a victim, life is against me, nobody likes me, the world is against me, why me, who's to blame? That's totally taking away your power. To come out of stage one, you have to practice forgiveness. You have to forgive yourself, and you have to forgive all others no matter what. If you stay with resentment and animosity, you are clouding your nervous system with toxic chemicals that are creating the condition for disease and blocking your right thinking. Does that make sense? Yes? That makes sense? So every spiritual path has built into it 
the power of forgiveness. Where you are forgiving all others and forgiving yourself. All forgiveness is self-forgiveness because the thoughts about someone else are in you. So they're generating chemicals, toxic chemicals, if it's unforgiveness, if it's resentment, if it's animosity, if it's blame, if it's shame, that's happening within you. So to come out of being a victim, you have to step into your full power by forgiving yourself, being willing to change, and forgiving all others, cutting the emotional cord. You're not condoning what anybody has done. You're not condoning what you have done. But you're forgiving yourself so that you can renew yourself. You're cutting the cord so that you can be more you. Are you picking up what I'm vibrationally putting down? Are you getting this? Yes? Somebody shout yes. 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 Beautiful. So out of, coming out of stage one is the power of forgiveness. We'll get into that in a moment. Stage two, which you've just been practicing, visualization, generating thought forms around the kind of life you want to live, visualization, declaration and decree, I am, I'm willing, I'm able, 